the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the ascension of the Lord when humanity is um, taken up into divinity and we are ex we are marvel at uh, how wonderful God is to us. And so let us take a moment and call to mind our sins, but also call to mind God's never failing mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, through Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments, stood beside them. 
they said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare gladness for the Lord the Most High the awesome is the great King over all the earth God mounts his throne to shouts of joy a blare of his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets. upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe. In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Instead of the seventh Sunday of Easter today, as Father has already announced, we're actually celebrating the Feast of the Ascension, where Jesus ascends to heaven and takes his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. During these past 40 days, these 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus has been with his disciples, just as each one of us, we too, have celebrated during these 40 days of the Easter season. Jesus has crossed into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, just as the prophecies had foretold for the Messiah. The Father has crowned him with the crown of glory because he has merited it by his passion, death, and resurrection. And in turn, he's eternally, therefore, interceding on our behalf with the Father. And he does so for each one of us, but he does so by name to receive the graces we need to join him one day in heaven, but also so that we can be of help to others to get them there too, because that is also part of our mission. As this reminds me of a recent, recent event that occurred just during this period of social distancing that is really getting a bit old for us. We have all seen where it has been necessary to move many of our typically large celebrations, like for example, confirmations and first communions outdoors. And as one of these really joyful and special occasions, a special mass was about to take place, there was a visiting bishop who turned to the group of parish priests, the priests and deacons of that parish and asked them where would they be seated during the mass. With confidence, the most senior among them said, well, Your Excellency, we will, of course, be seated on your right. To which the bishop gave a very knowing, very knowing and quiet smile. And he said, ah, so you, you will be the chosen ones. But then the youngest among them spoke up and said, but Your Excellency, the choir, the choir is already seated and taking up all of the space to your right. So we'll have to be seated on your left. And with that same knowing look, the bishop leaned in quietly and said, then I guess I'll have to pray for you instead. You see, certainly the ascension of Jesus is to a place of honor, to be sure. But it's also a place of kingly power. To be at the right hand of God means to have a share in his authority. So what image of the ascension should we have? Well, let's first discuss perhaps maybe the image that we shouldn't have. Well, according to Bishop Barron, gave a beautiful homily on the Ascension. He said it isn't meant to be seen as a, a balloon going up, up and away, disappearing from our sight. Because this image of Jesus disappearing into the clouds, that can sometimes mislead some of us. Jesus didn't go away. Jesus didn't disappear. This Ascension really is meant to be seen in really two significant ways. But first, we should also understand that Jesus' actual ascension to the right hand of the Father is just as important 
for his church today as the incarnation. Just as important as his passion, his death, and his resurrection. You see, the ascension should be seen both from a physical as well as a spiritual dimension. Now, as we envision that physical dimension, Jesus, in our first reading today, we see him ascend bodily into heaven. But we should also know that this, this place next to the Father means that he too is outside of space and time. It means Jesus can not only just walk through locked doors to be present in the upper room with his disciples, and at the same time, in his risen transformation, he can be hungry, and he can eat a piece of baked fish right there in front of them. It also means that he can be on the road with his disciples to Emmaus and then just vanish from sight. It means that Jesus can be present in all places in all times. And just like the Father, now that Jesus is beyond space and time, his ascension means that he can be present to the whole life of his church at any time, at any place. Now, you and I are here in Poway. We are here at St. Michael's in the year 2021. But because we're all limited in that sense, we can only be here in this certain place in this certain time. And for Jesus, that's also true when Jesus ate and drank with us. He walked with us, he breathed with us the same air, albeit maybe his a little purer than ours. Still, he felt the warmth of the same sun. He said he felt the same fresh coolness of a breeze and of course the cleansing feeling of rain upon his human skin. But then Jesus physically ascended into heaven. And so like the Father, he could now touch all space and all time. And while in that holy place at the Father's right hand, in that lofty perch, like a commander who perhaps surveys the entire field, Jesus can see everything in his church. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come and judge the living and the dead. That's the creed that we're going to be sharing here in just a few minutes. To be seated at the right hand of the authority is indeed to have a share in the same power as the chosen one. So as he and the Father share this authority, how is it then that they are going to direct the church? Well, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. You see, we first have to discard that image of Jesus going up, up, and away, never to be seen again. We have to see him and the Father together working on our behalf. This, of course, is where the Holy Spirit comes in, because together they send the Holy Spirit to the church, just as we are about to await Pentecost, which will be next Sunday, a week from now. Because then our part in this saving work, that's when our part goes into high gear, if you will. As attested in the Acts of the Apostles today, where we are not only to receive the special graces that we need, but the graces we need to help others as well. Because that too is the mission. And there at the Father's right hand, our Lord speaks on our behalf to the Father, interceding for us for all eternity in our names. This is how and why each one of us needs the Trinity to help in fulfilling the church's mission throughout history. You see, to help our Lord, it is to help him continue his saving work here on earth. But in order to do that, Jesus intimately knows all about our human condition. He knows that we need constant nourishment, both spiritual as well as physical. And this is where we find the liturgical side, the liturgical aspect of the ascension. You see, standing over here, over here, this is not a symbol of Christ's ascendancy. This altar actually is a place where you and I go to participate in the liturgical aspect of his ascendancy, the sacrifice of his body and blood for us. It's this altar that we participate, not just sacramentally, but we participate intimately in his passion, his death, his resurrection, 
and his ascension. This perpetual sacrifice, which is being offered for us and the salvation of the world, it's being offered and it means something to each one of us individually by name. Before his ascension, we know the days that Jesus spent when he had risen from the dead. Those were among the most precious moments on earth for his faithful disciples. I mean, just, just imagine what those days would have been like. Being reunited with someone you thought you had lost, but only to find out that he's still with you. It was quality time just for them. And as last Sunday reminds us, he remains in communion with us. That word remain mentioned so many times. And from this vantage point in eternity, Jesus continues to do everything in his power to help us remain in communion with him. Not just on Easter, not just here on the Feast of the Ascension, Pentecost or Christmas, but 365 days of the year. You see, this is the image that we need of the ascension. So as this Easter season nears its conclusion in a few days, we should be rejoicing, rejoicing and recall all of the wonderful blessings that we've received these past 40 days. They've come from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we look forward to the coming of Pentecost, we also look forward to the work of the church in his name here on earth. Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. Let us now renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. I do. do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Mindful of the mission given to us by Jesus Christ and empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the needs of the world. For our church, for Pope Francis and our local bishops, that they will guide us in our pursuit of the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For government and public agencies that will act with justice to ensure access to appropriate treatment and necessary supportive services to all people living with mental health concerns, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we might grow in faith and confidence that God is present among us and that we might be agents of that presence in this world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord. prayer. For those who celebrated the sacraments of initiation during this Easter season, may they bear witness to Christ's influence in their lives by the way they live, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. For all those on our website's vigil light list and written in our book of prayer intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, the homebound and the hospitalized, those who are lonely, depressed or discouraged, and those who feel distant from the love of God, especially Bill Spooner, Kevin Burke, Irene Montemayor, Angeline Beltran and Cindy Sharon, and for all who suffer from COVID-19, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For those who have died, that they might be at peace in God's kingdom, especially Rosemary Pierre, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer. O God of faithful love, you send us into the world to share the good news. Hear our prayer and keep us close to your heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. This time of the Mass is called the Offertory. We offer not only the bread and wine, which will become the body and blood of Christ, but we also offer our hearts and our very lives that they may be transformed. We also offer material goods, since this is when we usually take up a collection. If you would like to make an offering to support our ministry, we ask that you follow the promptings on the screen. Whether or not you are able to make a monetary offering at this time, may God bless you for the offering of your lives and hearts to his service. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heaven heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert and John and Ramon, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to, yourself, to your, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. of our God, as we gather here in Christ, feel the Spirit breathe upon us, the breath of life graced and divine. We have come to break the bread. come to share our lives. Let us bring these fruits to the table. The love of God was and of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this day, on this very day, his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. Amen. May he grant that, as Christ, after his resurrection, was plainly seen by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you, who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Thanks be to God. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.